Hi guys, welcome back to another Hugh Jeffries video. In this video, I'm going to be fixing LG's last smartphone, the LG Wing. It looks just like another standard smartphone, that is, until you hinge out the display, revealing another below it. This one has a cracked screen and badly shattered back. I purchased it from the US in its current condition and had it imported to me here in Australia. Given the strange design, I'm curious on how repairable it will be. I wasn't able to find a repair manual, so I'll just have to wing it. In terms of parts, we'll need a new back and display. The new screen, which cost me $163 US dollars, came with no adhesive, and the borders look about a millimeter or two big. So I'm going to need to find a way to attach it to the existing frame. To begin, I'll power down the wing and start opening up the phone. To do that, I'll need to heat the back glass on a heat plate for a few minutes to help soften the adhesive. Then the back panel can be worked off using a suction cup and a few picks. Thankfully, there are no cables or anything attaching to the back panel that you need to look out for. The more damaged the glass is, the harder it will be to remove. Oddly, some of the colored print also came off during removal. I've never seen this happen before, but if it were to happen to a non-cracked back, you would likely need to replace it, or you could easily make the back transparent. With the back loose, we can remove it from the phone. Before we can access some of the screws, the remaining adhesive and sections of the back panel need to be taken off. With those out of our way, it's time to remove several Phillips head screws that are holding in the wireless charging module. Pulling the module up and out of place will reveal the phone's motherboard. Here we get our first proper look at the inside of the device and a glimpse at just how that slide out display works. Space inside a phone is limited, but that hasn't stopped LG from installing a motorized pop-up camera and sliding screen. The big difference to any phone I've opened is that this phone has a hole in its motherboard, where the main display cable routes through. If we rotate the display, we can observe how the cable reacts. It has some slack that allows it to rotate with the display. We'll need to dive deeper to see anything further, as well as to be able to detach the screen. This will involve removing the motherboard from the phone. With the motherboard out, we can inspect it and see that it's in perfect condition. This phone is equipped with a Snapdragon 658G processor, 256 gigs of storage, and eight gigs of RAM. Now we have a clear view of the wing's display mechanism. It even includes a tiny shock absorber to help smooth out the opening of the screen. My question is how many Ks does a shock last before it needs replacing? Wait, this isn't a car, so how many swivels? I don't know, but it's only held in with two screws. What's also held in with screws is the display's mechanism itself. After unfastening them, it still doesn't come off until it's unlatched. Once I've removed it, you can see how the latch mechanism works. There is a post preventing the screen from coming off, unless the display is open slightly. Next, I can remove the bracket assembly from the back of the display panel itself. There are several screws holding it down in place, and even some hidden ones under the hinge, so it'll need to be rotated out of place. After the display connector's plastic bracket is removed, the cable itself can be unplugged while the remaining cables stay attached to the PCB. The screen is still attached to the plastic frame. To separate it, I'll perform a similar procedure to that of when we remove the back panel. After the screen has been heated, it can be pried from the frame. The frame is only a very thin piece of plastic, so it's important not to apply too much pressure when prying as it could crack or snap in two. I would always recommend getting a display with the frame already attached. But in the case of this LG Wing, the only displays I could find came without the frame. Not only does this make the repair more difficult, but also increases the chance that the new display will get damaged during installation. OLED displays are incredibly thin and break so easily.
With the screen free, we can now see how it was attached. The adhesive was applied under the panel as well as around the edges with a thin bead of glue. I will attempt to replicate this when I reassemble. Now I can remove all the old adhesive. While doing so, my tweezers caught a magnet. These are extremely important as we'll see later on. It's important to know that the display's extension cable runs under the display before it reconnects with the PCB. So if you damage this cable, it can theoretically be replaced, but you would likely destroy the display doing it. Now is a good time to reattach that magnet into place before I forget. Prior to attaching the screen, I'll test that it actually works. To do this, I'll connect the bare minimum of components required to do so. After connecting everything up, I can power on the phone. Once it's booted, we can see the screen is lit up, but the touch isn't working. It's completely unresponsive. So I decided to check my connections because I've ran into this issue before where something just isn't quite plugged in right and it causes something not to work. So with everything reconnected, I can test once again. This time around, it's exactly the same. The touch still doesn't work. At this point, you might think I have a faulty display, but remember those magnets I said were extremely important? Well, they have a purpose. They tell the phone what position the display is in. The phone currently thinks the display is being rotated so the touch is disabled. To demonstrate this, I will now install the display as it would be normally and retest. Now the touch works perfectly fine. With everything tested, we can now separate the display from the phone once again and begin applying the new adhesive. I will apply tape in the same areas as LG did. After doing so, I'll also add a bead of liquid adhesive around the perimeter. This is especially important for the lower section as there's no way to use tape. The bezel is too thin and you can't apply tape to the flex cable as it wouldn't help hold the screen in place. With all that adhesive installed, it's sure going to hold the display in place. I'll remove all the plastic protective film from the back of our display panel before we attach it in place. It's important to make sure there's no dust on that fingerprint reader, otherwise it may cause issues with fingerprint recognition. With the display lined up into position, it can be pressed down into place. I'll also use a few rubber bands to help hold the display in place while the glue dries. Once dry, it's time to reassemble. I'll connect the display's cable to the PCB before reinstalling the hinge. Proceeding, the display module can be attached to the frame. I will be sure to maneuver the display slightly to ensure the alignment post enters the track. You'll know it's in when the display won't fall off of the frame even though there isn't any screws installed. However, once we've installed those screws, it's time for the motherboard to go back into position. After routing all of the flex cables, including that display cable which needs to go through the motherboard itself, everything can be reconnected into place. After reinstalling the SIM tray, it's time to attach the wireless charging module and its several Phillips head screws. With that, it's time for our new back panel to be attached. Before doing so, we'll need to transfer the old camera lens across to the new panel. After taking it out, any remaining glue can be removed. I'll be using E8000 liquid adhesive to reattach it to the new glass panel. A bead of glue around the perimeter will be sufficient. After the glue is applied, it can be stuck into position. 
Next, the pre-cut adhesive for the back panel can be installed. Given the back of this phone curves to 90 degrees, applying the adhesive proved more difficult than I'd anticipated. However, after it's been applied, the internals of the phone can be wiped down with a microfiber cloth before the glass panel is attached. Ensuring it's correctly lined up, it can be firmly pressed down, securing it in place. Lastly, any excess glue that has seeped out from the camera lens or from under the display can be cleaned off before removing the plastic protective film from our new display. And we're done. So this is it, LG's last ever smartphone, the LG Wing. After having restored this once broken unit, I am now not only left with one very interesting and fully working phone, but also I now know how it works on the inside. The best practical use for this dual screen setup that I could come up with is being able to watch a YouTube video while still continuing to use the phone on the other, smaller display. And on that note, this has been a Hugh Jeffries video. If you like what you saw, hit that subscribe button and consider checking out the phone restoration playlist for more videos just like this one. And if you're looking for any used devices, be sure to check out my online store, link for which is down in the description. That's all for this video, and I'll catch you guys next time.